Welcome to um, Signals and Systems series of videos. This is the first one in the series. Um, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about signals and systems. So uh, basically, as the name implies, uh, this is a study of uh, signals and systems. And it's, it's, it's our way of taking an actual system and um, describing it mathematically such that we could leverage all the electrical circuits fundamentals that we've learned and how they were related to a sinusoidal or a DC and translate all of that into a mathematical equation such that we can work on a much more complex uh, system that is built out of the, all the parameters that we had learned earlier. Uh, and the, the math gives us the um, tools and the abstraction that we need to be able to uh, describe, analyze, uh, design circuits based on the specific complex characteristic we want them to have. Now, in this set of videos, we are strictly focused on the electrical engineering use and uh, of, of signals and systems. But signals and systems, the same theories and same conversations we're going to have here is applied in a, in a very, very diverse um, uh, set of fields, things such as uh, image processing, speech processing, uh, artificial intelligence, biomedical engineering, seismology and geology, acoustics and visuals, um, and, and it even gets extended and more recently they're being heavily used in the financial analysis and forecasting business so, so it's, got a, it's got a huge, huge coverage. We are only interested here uh, from an electrical point of view, and, but all the techniques we learn, of course, can be applied to other topics as well. So let's go ahead and start with the basics. In signals and systems, when we are talking about a signal, we are talking about uh, X of T. We usually refer to it as X of T. Now we start as if X of T being a scalar, we having only one value, and typically X of T we reserve to be used for input to our device, okay? And then um, we have the, the system here, and system is simply defined as something that has one or more inputs, and of course has one or more output, and we typically use Y of T to refer to the output. So, so, and then, so the system is basically defined as something that has an input and has an output. It basically, and the way we talk about it, we say system shapes the input into output. Okay. And then, of course, X of T is input, Y of T is output. So now maybe the question is, so what was the input and what was the output when we were doing circuits? So, for example, let's take a look at a simple filter um, circuit. And if, if, you, if you recall, the filters uh, had a, let's say, a simple filter, a parallel cir circuit here. And, uh, oops, so let's make this an inductor. So it's a interesting, more interesting filter. So, so here you have a plus and minus V of out. You have I of out, and you have an I of in, and you probably have some, some sort of a input coming in okay so v of n so we could think of this as a system and um, the way we would think of this as a system let me kind of extend this out a little bit and let's go ahead and make i of t i of out it's this way i can draw lines around it i of out here for this particular case just to show what the system is for this particular case we're probably going to draw a box right around here and we're gonna call this a system, okay? And now the question is, what's the input and the output? Input and the output from, from our perspective could be either the voltage or the current, it really doesn't matter. For, for one case, for let's say one case, we might decide that X1 of T is equal to I of T, and that's an input. And therefore, if you wanna stay consistent, although you don't have to, X of 2T is equal to, I'm sorry, x of uh, y output, y, y1 corresponding to x1 is i of out t. We could also, in another case, come back around 
and say, oh, this is x2, uh, x2 of t, the input is v of n of t, and then y, the output corresponding output is potentially y out of t. So, so, but instead of drawing the circuit and showing that, we're gonna focus on this uh, simply as a system, okay? And again, as we mentioned before, this is used in a variety of uh, places. Our focus here is gonna be on um, electrical systems, but uh, it applies in a diverse group of the chemical systems, mechanical systems, uh, seismology systems, financial market systems, and all that. And our goal really is to use these techniques we're going to learn to analyze, characterize existing systems, design systems to process signals based on a set of rules. Uh, we want to enhance or restore signals. Uh, we may want to control a characteristic of a given system based on the input, uh, system behavior, and other systems. So, so that's more or less what we what we call a system. 